विद्यार्थी मित्रमैत्रिणींनो नमस्कार मी जनबंधू टुडे वी शॅल स्पीक अबाउट फिलॉसॉफिकल अँड सोशल फाउंडेशन ऑफ रिसर्च इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच ऑल्सो प्रिव्हियसली मीन्स जनरली ओल्डन डेज मोस्ट ऑफ द रिसर्च वॉज फिलॉसॉफिकल इन नेचर and the modern ideas of research were not introduced philosophers were calling research as logical reasoning and on the basis of logical reasoning they were trying to give the answers to almost all the questions in the society there were two major logical research system which were called as inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning in fact both these inductive and deductive reasoning are directly related to even the modern research secondly all research is based on assumptions about how the world is perceived and how we can best come to understand it though nobody really knows how we can best understand the world still philosophers have been trying to convince the people that we can understand the world properly now you will find that the philosophers they work mostly on four grounds the investigation of causes and laws underlying realities it doesn't mean that whatever they were telling it was correct but it was logically appealing secondly inquiry into the nature of things based on logical reasoning so whatever the inquiry they were doing on the basis of their logic they were trying to explain the phenomenon and they were trying to give the causes of that every time that might not be correct take a very simple example for example suppose there is a child of age 3 and this child has gone to the garden along with a philosopher who doesn't have knowledge of botany the child has asked a simple question to the philosopher well why this flower is red and why this flower is yellow so the philosopher is trying to satiate the hunger of the child the hunger of the knowledge of the child on the basis of some logical reasoning scientifically it may not be correct but temporarily the child is satisfied the philosopher might say well my child it is the creation of the god god has created this flower as yellow whereas god has created the other flower as red so only logical reasoning was there it might not be scientifically correct but suppose if i send the same child along with a professor of botany to the same garden and the child has asked the same question to the professor of botany he will not give the answer on the basis of logical reasoning but he will answer the question on the basis of scientific knowledge this is the difference between philosophical approach and the modern research the investigation of natural phenomena and its systematization in theory and experiment that were done by earlier people also of course some of the theories are useful even today for example the principle suggested by aristotle and plato are still being used especially in democratic country reasoning is a process by which we generate examine and evaluate information so there are two types of reasoning one is deductive reasoning and the other one is inductive reasoning deductive reasoning works from more general to more specific the best example is first we formulate a theory after theory we go for hypothesis after hypothesis we observe the phenomenon and if the observation supports the hypothesis or the theory we confirm that well it was correct on the contrary inductive reasoning is just different 
it goes from specific observation to broader generalization and theorization. It means that here first we observe then prepare a pattern then frame tentative hypothesis and on the basis of that we frame the theory. It does not mean that philosophical thinking is not correct. If philosophy is joined with mathematics then you will find that many good things could be brought into surface. For example, in 1932 Clark Hull and his associate without performing a single experiment they had given mathematico deductive theory of learning and it worked. So, this kind of reasoning is also useful and philosophical research is also very much useful. Philosophical system is based upon a doctrine especially the system of Auguste Comte who designed to supersede theology and metaphysics. Now, remember one thing throughout the beginning of the world two things they have great impact one is theology related to religion and the other one is metaphysic, metaphysics. Metaphysics is nothing but imaginary answer. For example, in the evening you are sitting at the terrace of your house, child is there, there are no stars twinkling in the sky. Now, gradually some stars are appearing in the sky and the child is asking you a question. Well, where were the stars during daytime? And then if you do not know the correct answer, you are giving metaphysical answer. So, metaphysics is not useful, neither theology is totally useful, but the scientific research is more useful. Apart from philosophical foundation, there is sociological foundation. In social research, the bulk of discussion and much of the terminology relate to one way or another to the four elements. Number one is method. For carrying out any kind of research work, it is the method that is important. You have to decide whatever your topic might be, whether it is in the field of science, in the field of technology or in the field of social science. When you want to attack a problem, then it is necessary that you must have a systematic method and you must go step by step. Second one is methodology. There is a difference between method and methodology. Method is singular. Methodology consists of several different types of methods and these are carried out one after another. For example, in method you will find that we analyze the data related to some research question or hypothesis. Whereas, in methodology there is strategy, there is plan of action, there is process or design lying behind the choice and the use of particular method. So, methodology is more comprehensive, method is less. Then you will find third one that is theoretical perspective. Purpose of every research work is to establish a theory, generalize it and afterward frame the law. The philosophical stance informing the methodology and thus providing a context for the process of grounding its logic and criteria relates to theoretical perspective. And the fourth point is epistemology. This is the theory of knowledge embedded in the theoretical perspective and thereby in the methodology epistemology. See for example, there is a theory of gravitational force. Okay. So, gravitational force is presented in the form of methodology in the form of theory. Otherwise, every one of we experience the gravitational force. Okay. We can walk straight on the road because of gravitational force. So, here you will find that there are two approaches. First is epistemology, then theoretical perspective, 
then methodology and then methods and B is positivism, survey research and statistical analysis. In fact, we can ignore philosophical approach, we can ignore sociological approach and we can go for univariate research studies. For example, somebody is working in the field of chemistry. So, he can deal with chemicals only and talk about the reactions of the chemicals univariate approach. Somebody is doing research in the field of behavioral sciences, how behavior takes place, what are the changes that are taking place in behavior, but behavior is not a uni unique uh, univariate phenomenon in the sense that your behavior is influenced by many factors. For example, your behavior depends upon the dietary pattern even, the type of diet you are consuming that also influences your behavior. Your behavior depends upon geography in which you live. Research tells you that during winter the number of accidents are less in summer the number of accidents are more. Climatic conditions matter of geography, climatology they are also influencing your behavior. Another thing stress, strain all these are also influencing your behavior. Not only that many a times we feel that we are all normal, but sometimes our behavior is not normal. Take a simple example, there is a grand function and for that grand function you have dressed up yourself nicely, had done everything and now you are going to search the match sandals, chappals or shoes. And you go to the rack and you find that the matched sandal, chappal or shoes are not available. There are only 10 minutes to reach to the place, you are already late. What happens? You do not behave normally. There some abnormal behavior is cropping in and then you are searching at other place, then one small child comes and in that small child's legs you are sam the sandals are there. So, what happens? You just insert your feet into the sam sandals and then you talk alone shouting doing something unusual and you come out of your home. Tell me talking singly is it a normal behavior? So, you will find that there is some interdisciplinary approach in all our behavior. That is why nowadays you will find that instead of carrying out univariate research, it is said that it is better to go for the interdisciplinary approach. For example, a person working in the field of computer technology, he can work along with a psychologist. For example, you are dealing with computer and you are thinking that human being is nothing but a machine, but what about the feelings, what about the emotions, what about the personal reactions. And for this purpose, a person working in the field of computer should take help of the psychologist also. There are nowadays attempts that are being made to develop artificial intelligence and who are working in the field? Psychologists are working and then the persons from the computer technology they are working. These persons what they are doing? Robo, <coughs> robo development of robo is a job of the technician or the technologist. However, to introduce the artificial intelligence, it is a job of the psychologist and also to introduce the emotions and feelings is the job of the psychologist. And that is why in all the fields, it is possible that you can take help of the other individuals. For example, we say 
wherever there is human being whether in the laboratory whether in computer room whether in space there is psychology because psychology deals with human being and their behavioral changes and that is why there is importance of interdisciplinary approach friends now you are at liberty to ask me questions regarding this i hope you have followed what i have delivered in the classroom thank you